Hello. My name is Victor Santiago, reading from Books and Books in Coral Gables. This is a passage from The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. My father was the one who took the phone call on December 9th. It was the beginning of the end. He gave the police my blood type, had to describe the lightness of my skin. They asked him if I had any identifying features. He began to describe my face in detail, getting lost in it. Detective Fennerman let him go on, the next news too horrible to interrupt with. But then he said it. Mr. Salmon, we have found only a body part. My father stood in the kitchen and a sickening shiver overtook him. How could he tell that to Abigail? So you can't be certain that she's dead, he asked. Nothing is ever certain, Len Fennerman said. That was the line my father said to my mother. Nothing is ever certain. For three nights he hadn't known how to touch my mother or what to say. Before, they had never found themselves broken together. Usually it was one needing the other, but not, but not both needing each other. And so there had been a way, by touching, to borrow from the stronger one's strength. And they had never understood, as they did now, what the word horror meant. Nothing is ever certain, my mother said, clinging to it as he had hoped she might. My mother had been the one who knew the meaning of each charm on my bracelet, where we had gotten it, and why I liked it. She made a meticulous list of what I'd carried and worn. If found miles away and in isolation along a road, these clues might lead a policeman there to link it to my death. In my mind, I had wavered between the bittersweet joy of seeing my mother name all the things I carried and loved and her futile hope that these things mattered. That a stranger who found a cartoon character eraser or a rock star button would report it to the police. After Len's phone call, my father reached out his hand and the two of them sat in the bed together, staring straight ahead in front of them. My mother numbly clinging to this list of things, my father feeling as if he were entering a dark tunnel. At some point, it began to rain. I could feel them both thinking the same thing then, but neither of them said it, that I was out there somewhere in the rain, that they hoped I was safe, that I was dry somewhere and warm. Neither of them knew who fell asleep first, their bones aching with exhaustion, they drifted off and woke guiltily at the same time. The rain, which had changed several times as the temperature dropped, was now hail, and the sound of it, of small so stones of ice hitting the roof above them, woke them together. They did not speak. They looked at each other in the small light cast from the lamp left on across the room. My mother began to cry, and my father held her wiped her tears with the pad of his thumbs as they crested her cheekbones and kissed her very gently on the eyes. I looked away from them then as they touched. I moved my eyes into the cornfield, seeing if there was anything that in the morning the police might find. The hail bent the stalks and drove all the animals into their holes. Not so deep beneath the earth were the warrens of the wild rabbits I loved the bunnies that ate the vegetables and flowers in the neighborhood nearby and that sometimes, unwittingly, brought poison home to their dens. Then, inside the earth and so far away from the man or woman who had laced a garden with toxic bait, an entire family of rabbits would curl into themselves and die. On the morning of the 10th, my father poured the scotch down the sink. Lindsay asked him why. I'm afraid I might drink it, he said. What was the phone call? My sister asked. What phone call? I heard you say that thing you always say about Susie's smile, about stars exploding. Did I say that? You got kind of goofy. It was a cop, wasn't it? No lies? No lies, Lindsay agreed. They found a body part. It might be Susie's. It was a hard sock in the stomach. What? Nothing is ever certain, my father tried. Lindsay sat down at the kitchen table. I'm going to be sick, she said. Honey, Dad, I want you to tell me what it was. Which body part? And then I'm going to need to throw up. My father
father got down a large metal mixing bowl. He brought it to the table and placed it near Lindsay before sitting down. Okay, she said. Tell me. It was an elbow. The Gilbert's dog found it. He held her hand and then she threw up, as she had promised, into the shiny silver bowl. Thank you for watching.